SpaceX Starship Flight 7 launch date and what upgrades are we going to see? I'm glad you asked. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus combination. You know I love that. The Bergamot. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We'll be talking about space, SpaceX, and their Starship Flight 7. You know, I absolutely love each one of these starships going off. I cover every one of them, and a lot of you guys are here hanging out with me during that coverage. I love it. It's just so amazing what is going on with SpaceX when it comes to the Starship and all of the innovation and things that they've been changing and testing and blowing the damn thing up to learn quicker and innovate faster and iterate when need be. So I absolutely love watching these flights and I'm sure you guys do too if you're watching this video. So we got some current updated information as to when IFT-7 or Starship Flight 7 will launch. We got the date. We also got a list of things that they changed from IFT-6 to 7. What are those upgrades that were made? And we're going to talk about that today. I was reading an article, I think it was over on Space News. I took that article and a few other ones, combined them together. I want to give you this information because I think it's important. So before I get into this article, I want to say that if you enjoy the content, throw the video a thumbs up. That's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this notification button over here so I go live when a new video comes out. You'll be notified of it immediately. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. And if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button right there. You can click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more Starlink content, I have about 390 videos I've put together just for you. The playlist can be found here. Don't click on that yet right here. So when you're done watching this video, go back here and click on that. You're going to once again find 390 videos that I've put together in the last 40 months for you. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it, because this channel has always been about the why and it will continue to be about the why. So let's jump right into this article and then I'll give you my commentary. And finally, I want to hear from you down below. What do you think about all of this? What excites you about it? What do you want to see them do sooner than later? For me, I would like to see them deposit some of the version three Starlink satellites into space. That's what I would like to see. Will that happen with IFT-7? I don't think so, but we'll get into it in just a second. FAA clears Flight 7 for launch. SpaceX just received the green light from the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, for Starship's highly anticipated Flight 7. This approval marks a major step forward for SpaceX as they finalize preparation for their groundbreaking launch. But what does this mean for the mission and its future? A surprising early approval. On December 17th, the FAA announced approval for Flight 7 along with minor license modifications, just in time for the holidays. Their early timing caught many by surprise and highlights the FAA's efforts to streamline licensing for the rapidly evolving commercial space industry. They needed to do that years ago. But at least they're doing it now. The updated license allows SpaceX to repeat the Flight 7 mission profile multiple times using the Block 2 ship paired with a Block 1 booster on a suborbital trajectory. This setup offers flexibility for future missions without needing further license changes, boosting SpaceX's efficiency as they refine their technology. Block 2 changes and new standards. The Block 2 Starship comes with design upgrades like extended tanks, but the FAA decided no major regulatory changes are needed. This means SpaceX can move forward without delay. However, before Flight 7 can launch, SpaceX must update a key safety document to ensure proper range safety and tracking, a critical requirement for operations at the Boca Chica, Texas site. Redefining Failure 
In recognition of Starship's experimental nature, the FAA has introduced two exceptions to its mishap investigation rule. Failures during an in-space demonstration burn or post-booster catch maneuver won't automatically trigger investigations unless safety or injury issues arise. That makes sense. These allowances give SpaceX more freedom to innovate without regulatory delays. Vehicle readiness. Ship 33 steps up. Ship 33, the first Block 2 Starship, recently completed critical engine tests, including a six-engine static fire and a deorbit burn. These are the first tests of its kind since Ship 29, highlighting SpaceX's commitment to improving its technology. Following these achievements, Ship 33 returned to Mega Bay 2 for final preparation. Unlike Ship 35, it hasn't required the removal of thermal protection tiles, a process process known as stripping, which can be done quickly if needed. That's good. Not having to remove those tiles is a time saver. Even though they say it's quick, it still takes time. Booster and pad preparation. Booster 14 is being finalized with key upgrades, including the installation of its hot stage ring before it rolls out for stacking. Meanwhile, work at the launch pad continues, with tasks like repainting the tower legs and updating cryogenic pipes are still ongoing. While these updates won't delay Flight 7, they're setting the stage for future missions. The Countdown to Launch Day if all goes as planned, SpaceX targets a January 11th launch. This date aligns with NASA's imaging plan from Perth, Australia, suggesting a late afternoon launch for optimal sunlight at the landing zone. That's very important because when that thing lands in the ocean, the first time they did that Starship landing in the ocean, they didn't see it very well because it was at night. The second landing, Flight 6, they landed in the Indian Ocean, but it was during the day, so they were able to get a lot of footage to see what went right, what went wrong. They know what's going on. That's the same thing that they're going to do now with Flight 7, and it makes sense. With FAA approval in hand, hardware tested, and final touches underway, Flight 7 is shaping up to be yet another thrilling chapter in SpaceX's Starship journey. Yes, absolutely. I'm excited about it. I hope you guys are too. I can't wait to see it. They're saying January 11th. I mean, we're seeing launches like a month or two apart from each other now. It's not like months and months and months. The FAA is allowing this to happen. All of a sudden, it's like a miracle. I don't know what happened. Could it be a new administration getting in that's going to put the kibosh on all of the regulatory nonsense? Eh, I don't know. Maybe. What do you think down below? I would love to hear it. But something's happened over there at the FAA because they're like, yeah, yeah, you're doing good. All right, go ahead. We're going to give you approval. We're going to give you approval for this one and all others that are similar to this. You'll be able to do it. Also, we're going to change the failure rules for you. So we're not going to be scrutinizing you if you like did a burn in space and it didn't work or you came in for a landing, but you had to abort that landing and land in the Gulf of Mexico. We're not going to complain about that and delay you any. Thank you. Appreciate that. So I wrote down some changes or some design enhancements that were going to be tested on Flight 7. And I want to share these with you because it's something that we can watch for during the flight. Number one, they're redesigning the forward flaps. Improved aerodynamics for better control during ascent and descent. That's important, right? Increased propellant capacity. Larger tanks to support longer missions and heavier payloads. Advanced thermal protection latest generation tiles and secondary layers to enhance heat resistance during re-entry. Now, that one is important, right? But what we did find out in this article, they didn't change any tiles. So I don't know how they're going to be working on this advanced thermal protection as they state, but maybe it's just them simply leaving out a bunch of tiles, maybe a hundred tiles, maybe a thousand tiles, and then replacing the underlayment, let's call it, that secondary protection with something else, or maybe adding to the protection, like a steel layer or something, right? So they're gonna be definitely working on this advanced thermal protection because that is absolutely the most important thing. If the thing burns up on re-entry, then what's the point? You're trying to go for reusability. You can't burn the damn thing up, 
right? And you can't have tiles launching off too that you have to continuously replace these tiles. You wanna be able to launch them in a really good quick cadence. What's also really exciting is that SpaceX is trying to hit 25 launches in 2025. That's a lot of launches. You know, you're looking at what, two per month? That's that's nothing to sneeze at. That is a lot. So we'll see if they're able to do that. But anyways, January 11th, that's the date. Will it happen? I do believe it will. I think January 11th, I think that they've been ready for quite some time. All right. So we'll see what ends up happening with this. If they do launch on January 11th, I hope that you're here with me, hanging out with me right? Because we have a lot of fun with it for sure. Also, don't forget this mission, just like in the last, they're going to try to catch that super heavy, that booster rocket in the salad tongs, in the chopsticks, or as they call it, Mechazilla. That's always just an, just unbelievable to watch, right? So that is very exciting. We'll see if it happens. They're going to try to catch it. Will they catch it? Will they try and fail and the thing blows up and takes out the whole tower? Or will they have to abort like with IFT-6 and land the ship or land the Super Heavy in the Gulf of Mexico? What will happen? I don't know, but it's exciting no matter how you look at it. I hope you're excited for it too. And it's only what, two, three weeks away. Anyways, guys, tonight, once again, it's Friday. Join me for JC Live or as I call it, Free Speech Friday, right? Where we just hang out and just shoot it and talk about whatever. Definitely join me. Throw the video a thumbs up, like I said before, if you enjoyed the content. If not, throw it a thumbs down, I'm okay with that. At least you threw me something. Throw me a poop emoji. That's okay to throw me. <laughs> Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years and my merch and my shirts and my tees and my books and everything else. Pick something up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love y'all.